everybody. For today's presentation, we are going to be talking about scholarships and everything you should know. My name is Melissa. I am a fourth year U of O um, student and also a SAIL mentor. My name is Nicholas Ramos and I am a fourth year at the University of Oregon and been with SAIL for four years. Excited to be here. All right. So starting off, I will give you a brief rundown of what we're going to talk about. So <clears throat> we're going to talk about the basics of scholarships, why they're important, where you can find these scholarships and more information or resources, and how to get and keep scholarships. Today, we're not going to have a Q&A because it's just a recording, but usually we would. But first, it's important to talk about SAIL, who we are. So we offer a summer program. It is a, a free one-week program for students to learn at and explore the U of O campus. We also do presentations like these, both live and recorded. Uh, we have also live stream presentations by U of O faculty um, once a week. And then we also offer mentoring and assistance through weekly sessions that help you with college readiness and assistance. Um, and then for more services and more information about who we are in the program, feel free to always reach out to us by emailing us at salesstaff at uorgan.edu, um, or you can always check out our website, sale.uorgan.edu. So let's start with the basics, why scholarships are important. So first, scholarships are a type of financial aid you do not need to pay back. Um, scholarships are awarded to students for different reasons. It could be academic achievement, um, a special talent, or specific characteristics. And they may range from a few hundred dollars up to the full cost of attendance. Um, they can be awarded to be used at a specific school or any college you choose to attend to. So make sure to always read that fine print. Uh, common types of scholarships are merit-based and need-based. Uh, merit-based are scholarships that are typically awarded on the basis of academics, athletics, or artistic merit. Um, and need-based is scholarships that are given to students on a basis of you know, financial needs, such as you know, FAFSA. Here are some examples of merit-based scholarships at the U of O. There is the STAMPS, the Presidential Diversity Excellence Summit, and APEX scholarship. Um, so make sure to check the basis for each award since they can vary with your GPA, any extracurriculars, um, the S SAT or ACT requirements. So if you're interested in any of these scholarships, make sure to check out the website with the um, U of O scholarships to get more information about them and also the deadlines. Um, also important to note is that DACA and undocumented students are automatically considered for these scholarships. Another form of merit base would be the uh, Lane Community, the LCC Foundation. Uh, this can be found on their website. Um, so, you know, after you are enrolled into the LCC, you can create an account and that fills your scholarships that you qualify for, you know, such as the LCC Foundation. It's a little straightforward. Um, you go to their website and they'll provide you with all the information. And then some need-based examples. Um, the, process, the process for determining need-based grants begins with students filling out the FAFSA, also known as a free application for federal student aid form. Um, this Pell Grant is by far the most popular need-based grant um, with students receiving a total of $28.2 billion in 2016. So Pell Grants are 100% need-based. And then the maximum award um, that was given through FAFSA for 2020, 2020, 2021, um, was 6,345. So it's really, really important to fill this form out since most of your, all actually all of your institutions and a lot of the um, need-based scholarships will require it. And then an example of foundation that gives awards, um, uh, that awards scholarships on the basis of need includes the Jack Kent Cook Foundation. Um, they have a scholarship program designed to encourage and support um, students who work hard and have a financial need. Um, and then on top of these U of O scholarships that DACA and undocumented students are eligible for, the U of O does offer um, a need-based scholarship specifically for DACA and undocumented students called the Opportunity Through Excellence Scholarship. Um, so the important question, why are scholarships important? Um, there's no limits to these scholarships. Uh, the more you apply, the more money you can be eligible for. 
So apply, apply, apply. Do as many as your little heart desires and as much as you can take. Uh, scholarships are free. Unlike loans, you do not have to pay these back. If the scholarship asks you to pay for it, that is a scam. Don't do it. You don't have to pay them back. You don't have to pay to apply. These are all free. Lastly, it's, a, it's an opportunity. You can focus on maximizing your college experience, and volunteering, doing internships, get you a lot of experience, put it on your resume, and then you can write about it. And now jumping into where you can find scholarships, who you can go to um, for more information. All right, first off, you can find them at OSAC. One application is through OSAC, or apply, start over, apologize. One application through OSAC applies you for a thousand, thousands of scholarships. Re you, all you have to do is reapply each year. Hundreds, thousands, a lot, right? You can find it at your school. Always contact your school's college counselor for financial aid information and resources. A lot of schools have uh, college and career centers. This is a great resource that a lot of people forget about. You can ask questions and they'll love to help you. Um, you could look at databases such as College Board has a national um, scholarship database. You find a bunch of scholarships, more than you want really, but you know, you'll find a lot. Anyways, volunteering. A lot of organizations uh, that you volunteer for have scholarships and dedicate, and they're dedicated for long-term volunteers. So if you're there for, you know, five years, such as, for example, Kiwanis Club. Um, I used to help out with the Kiwanis Club when I was younger and middle school, and I ended up getting a scholarship to come to college. Um, it's a very valuable resource. Um, employment, uh, the companies you have, you or your parents work for, may have scholarships available to employees or children of employees. Um, another resource, USDL, US Department of Labor, has free scholarship search tools to find you scholarships that you need to apply for. Apply, apply, apply. Lastly, uh, the colleges you are accepted to may also offer scholarships such as Pathway Oregon at the U of L. And now getting and keeping scholarships. We, here are some tips for applying for scholarships, getting them and making sure to keep them for the long term. So how to get your scholarships. Start with intention. Know what the scholarship is looking for. Um, cater to what your scholarship is asking, what it wants, thoroughly understand the question and answer specifically. They'll ask you a lot of like little questions that you may think is not important, but just try to answer all the questions as much as possible and you'll give yourself you know, the best opportunity. Uh, involvement, extracurricular activities outside of school are very important. Volunteering gives you a huge boost to your application. Colleges love to see you improving your community. Emotion, um, show scholarships that you care. Show, show a sense of passion, you know, that you're thankful for the opportunity that you have in you know, going to college and you'll make the best of it. Uh, they'll really value that. Lastly, apply. The more you apply for, the more you can get. A lot of opportunities behind it. It might be a lot, but a lot of things you could kind of you know, reuse in, when applying for applications. So it's very important to apply. And now thinking about how to keep those scholarships, um, make sure you know whether your scholarship is renewable, know the scholarship's eligibility basis, um, and then just in case, check the reinstatement policy. So for scholarship renewability, um, if it's renewable, you must demonstrate viability every year. So make sure you know how often the scholarship eligibility is reviewed, when this review process occurs, what you need to reapply to ensure renewal, um, how often, and if you need to submit any forms. To know the scholarship eligibility, some scholarships have ongoing requirements throughout the year um, that make them whether that make them able to be renewable or not. So do you have to study in a specific field to keep that scholarship? Do you have to maintain a certain GPA? Um, enrolled in a certain amount of credits. If it's an athletic scholarship, how do you make sure to keep it? Um, so make sure that you know the eligibility basis for it, not, be, not just before you apply, but also when you have that scholarship. Um, and then just in case, if you lose it, it's good to know um, what scholarships, the eligibility, what, what the scholarships eligibility policy is to get it back. 
um, just in case you end up in that situation. So under what circumstances can you get the scholarship if you lose it, um, if there's a probationary period prior to losing it, and then what procedure you should do to follow up. It's good to plan ahead. It's never something um, you want to be in. It's not a situation that um, anybody would like to be, but it's always good to plan rather than to have it catch you by surprise. Thank you. That is our presentation. I know you're thinking, oh, I just want to learn more about scholarships, right? You could always ask us. Email us at salesstaff at uoregon.edu. Stay up to date at our Instagram, uo.sale. Maybe we'll post some scholarships. Who knows? You know, it could be a little surprise. You can always visit our website, sale.uoregon.edu. You can find valuable information. Um, or you could text us. That's all we have for you. Thank you for watching. Thank you.